Let's talk about fish. Packed with healthy omega-3 fatty acids, protein, and essential nutrients, fish can be a key to a strong heart and a well-functioning body. But before you take a bite, there's something important to know. Not all fish are created equal. In fact, choosing the wrong one can do more harm than good. Today, we're diving into seven types of fish you should avoid, along with some of the best alternatives. Plus, we'll share key tips for selecting fish wisely and reveal a surprisingly long-lived fish that appears on many restaurant menus, but one you might want to steer clear of. After all, if a fish can live for 150 years, it's had plenty of time to accumulate toxins. Once those toxins enter your system, they can wreak havoc on your body and brain. But before we get into the details, do us a quick favor. Hit the thumbs up button to help spread awareness about heart health. And don't forget to ring the bell so you never miss our latest videos packed with valuable health insights. Studies also show that fish from the Mediterranean Sea tend to have even higher mercury levels compared to those caught in the Atlantic. The Mediterranean Sea is thought to contain approximately 50% of the world's mercury resources. According to the Journal of Environmental Research, the Mediterranean Basin has been studied extensively for over two decades due to this phenomenon. Fish from this region tend to have higher mercury levels compared to the same species found in the Atlantic Ocean. A similar trend is observed in seabirds, as eggs from the Mediterranean Basin contain three to four times more mercury than those from the Atlantic. Interestingly, this is where the island of Sardinia is located, one of the world's five blue zones, known for longevity and lower rates of disease. Although fish is a part of the Sardinian diet, the preference is for smaller species like sardines, anchovies, and cod. These fish are younger and occupy the middle of the food chain, meaning they accumulate fewer toxins, including mercury. As we'll discuss shortly, these are key factors to consider when selecting fish. Eel. While eel is considered a delicacy, particularly in sushi, it's not the best choice. You may have heard that raw eel and its blood are toxic to humans, though cooking neutralizes this danger. However, the bigger concern is that eel absorbs high levels of environmental toxins. A study published in the scientific journal Chemosphere found that dyes from the clothing and textile industries accumulate in eel tissue, which can then transfer to humans when consumed. Researchers analyzed eels from 91 locations in Belgian rivers, canals, and lakes, discovering that 77% of the sites showed contamination from highly toxic fabric dyes. In Taiwan, eel populations have been found to contain alarming levels of cadmium, a heavy metal linked to the electroplating industry. Cadmium exposure has been associated with osteomalacia, a condition that weakens bones, as well as kidney damage caused by renal tubular malfunction. Further studies have detected flame retardants and plasticizers in eels intended for human consumption. In addition to health risks, eel fishing is unsustainable. Many eel species are endangered due to overfishing and habitat destruction, trends exacerbated by the rising popularity of sushi and Japanese eel dishes. Some species, such as the European eel, are protected under international conservation agreements. Efforts to breed eels artificially have been unsuccessful, meaning their populations continue to decline. Healthier fish choices. The good news is that there are plenty of fish options that offer great health benefits. Some of the best choices include salmon, tuna, sardines, anchovies, cod, and trout. These fish are rich in omega-3 fatty acids, which help reduce inflammation, lower the risk of heart disease, and support brain health. They are also excellent sources of protein and essential nutrients. Most of these options, except some types of tuna, are low in mercury and other contaminants. Tuna is a good source of potassium, magnesium, and vitamin B12, but larger older tuna species can accumulate significant mercury levels. To minimize exposure, opt for smaller varieties like skipjack tuna, commonly found in canned tuna wild-caught versus farmed fish. A crucial factor when choosing fish is whether it is wild-caught or farmed. Wild-caught fish live in their natural environment, while farmed fish are raised in controlled settings like ponds or enclosures. The nutritional differences between the two are significant. Wild-caught salmon, for example, has higher omega-3 levels and lower omega-6, which helps reduce inflammation. 
It also tends to contain fewer pesticides, antibiotics, and other contaminants. Antibiotic use in farmed fish is a growing concern, as it contributes to antibiotic resistance, a major public health issue. That's why opting for wild-caught fish whenever possible is recommended. You can usually distinguish them by their appearance. Wild-caught salmon has a deeper red-orange hue, while farmed salmon is paler. Additionally, wild fish have well-developed tails from swimming in strong currents, unlike farmed fish, which have smaller tails due to limited movement. When buying whitefish fillets, look for firm flesh and a translucent white color. A general rule of thumb is to choose younger fish as they have had less time to accumulate toxins. For instance, a 5-year-old salmon will have far fewer contaminants than a 100-year-old orange roughy. Fish to avoid. To recap, here are seven types of fish you should avoid. Tilapia, king mackerel, orange roughy, swordfish, shark, tilefish, and eel. Instead, choose wild-caught salmon, sardines, anchovies, cod, and trout, while being mindful of your tuna consumption, opting for skipjack when possible. We hope this information has been helpful. Do you have any thoughts or questions? Feel free to share in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more updates on health and nutrition. Thanks for watching, and here's to a happy, heart-healthy lifestyle.